Hey folks, welcome to The Shot with Cosmos with Cosmos. Today, we cheers to Grace Del Nichols, better known as Nichelle Nichols. <gasps> hey! Yes, Nichelle Nichols! Oh. And, yeah. all right. Time oh. to Nichelle Nichols. Yes. Nichelle Nichols. Yes, for those, you know, maybe too many confused, you may better know her as... Lieutenant Ohura of the USS mm -hmm. Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have to start with Star Trek, uh, where Nichols played communications officer, Lieutenant Ohura, mm -hmm. uh, for the entirety of the original series run. Um, but uh, she was a little different than almost everyone on TV at the time. I wonder why. Well, female. 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 It, yeah. was, it was all female. Female, yeah. That's just female of color yes. as well. Like those, <laughs> unfortunately, in TV, they didn't exist, especially mm -hmm. a role like Ohura. Yes, unless they were really a maid or, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, like so that. that's what was prominent, is that she wasn't there as a, like a, a token minority, or she wasn't there just as a, a menial role. Officer. She was a Great senior officer. deck officer and just doing her job. Yeah. And that was a weird groundbreaking part, is that she was just doing her job. Why is that? Yeah, I, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of commentaries in these yeah. shots. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, but you can't just say she was doing her job because that severely diminishes the talent of Nichols and what mm -hmm. she was able to do. Mm -hmm. She was trained and incredible. Uh, so, for example, during her younger years, uh, she was singing at a club and a guy named Duke Ellington came by oh, and listened to her. Just a guy. And invited her on tour for two years. Holy shit, so she really? toured with she Duke toured Ellington. Like, wow. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, she was Damn. a trained ballerina and she did all oh the Duke. Yeah. Wow. And she was under studies at Broadway, performed in dance, and always continued singing. And so fun fact, the voice you hear in the Star Trek theme is Nichelle Nichols. Oh shit, I didn't know yeah. that. And I you was can... learning so much from the show. Continue, continue. And you can find two of her albums on Spotify. Oh wow. <laughs> I'll be adding that to my pop rotation. <laughs> it's actually, I listened to it while writing this. It's, it's, really? it's really good, actually. Oh, okay. yeah. And so performing on stage is what she absolutely loves. Uh, so much so to the point where she wanted to leave Star Trek yes. after the first season. Yeah, this is the famous story. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're not familiar, uh, during an event at Beverly Hills after the first season wrapped up, uh, the event organizer came up to her and said, hey, there's a really big fan that wants to meet you. And he goes, okay, sure. And the fan says hello, and this is, of course, Dr. Martin Luther King. <laughs> What a fan to have. Right. So they get to talking, and she mentions how she's probably going to leave the show to go pursue Broadway. And he stops her and says, "You quote, you cannot. For the first time, we will be seen on television the way we should be seen every day. Wow. You, you what know, a wait, I, though. I, I, I it have, is a wait. I have to be honest. That, that is making my eyes oh, absolutely. a little bit. You know, just thinking about... about that that moment yeah, and yeah. hearing that the from gravity him. of that mm -hmm. you know and how things could have changed oh yeah <laughs> and just to remain like some you know character on some like on, uh, on some mediocre ratings mediocre tv show sci-fi sci tv show <laughs> <laughs> with like two dollars and that's for, progress right yes yeah uh and fun fact that was the only show that king and his wife would allow the children to stay up late for oh <laughs> so of course yeah so of course you can't say no to that yeah so she could, uh, uh, Hora, Nichols would continue to uh, portray her one capacity or another mm -hmm. for the next 54 years. Wow. Yeah, the last, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the last appearance was a fan made movie in 2020. Wow. So 54 oh, years. Movie. Yeah, she was in a couple of those. Wow. But that's not really the part I want to focus on okay. about Nichols. Okay. So I want to focus on something she once said while she was speaking at a NASA event. She said, Where are my people? Because in 1975, uh, the largest Star Trek convention to that point was held, and one of the speakers was NASA's director of science. And uh, Nichols, of course, listened and later said she was in awe and that it felt like she stepped on the moon herself. Wow. But that feeling, looking at the audience and the speakers, it was kind of burdened with a sense of uh, disenfranchisement. Mm -hmm. She wasn't part of this group. Right, right. Because... Okay, so during this time, of course, backing up for a moment, the cult of Star Trek was just in full swing. The movies were finally coming out, mm -hmm. and popularity exploded. Uh, Nichols was invited to speak in front of people who drew inspiration from the show, uh, including NASA, of course. And during one of these talks, she looked at all the faces she was giving the talks to and said, where are my people? Just the sea of white. Sea of white. Of yeah. And not just white, white men. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Because <laughs> in 1975, NASA had no black astronauts. 
Uh, they didn't have any women astronauts mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. And they, it was a good old boys club. Yeah. yeah. And even when NASA decided to open the recruitment doors to everyone else that wasn't just a white guy, you know, not many people responded. It, well, shit, it wasn't a, it wasn't a welcoming place. <laughs> I mean, I get that as yeah. a woman, you know, you don't feel like that's a... Oh, shit, it works a couple of different levels. On. <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> so she had given this speech, mm-hmm. people heard her, and she was clearly already vocal about the lack of diversity in NASA. And so, around that time, NASA, after she said that, approached her uh, to conduct outreach across the country. At least kudos to them. Yeah. And in response, Nichols said, quote, I will bring you so many qualified people, the world will never be the same. Nice. Yes. So for four months, she traveled around the U.S. appearing on TV, radio shows, promotional videos, doing anything she could to spread awareness. So before she started her tour, uh, NASA received 1,500 applicants all around. Uh-huh. Uh, w- fewer than 100 were women and 35 were minorities. Okay. okay. After her, 35 or uh, 1,500. Yeah. After her tour, 1,600 applicants from women and over 1,000 from minorities. Yes. Nice. Those people that responded to her included Sally Ride, yes, first American woman yes. in space, Guyan Bluford, the first Af- uh-huh. U.S. African American in space, uh, uh, Jim and Ming. yeah, that was later. Um, Ronald McNair, black belt extraordinaire, and he deserves that shot as well. Wait, black belt, black belt extraordinaire, and he has dogs, doesn't he? No, that's um. Leland Melvin. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, McNair was unfortunately on Chapel. Oh, yeah, that's right. But that's right. fabulous South guy. Carolina. Fabulous guy. He needs a shot soon. And the first U.S. Asian American in space, Ellison Onizaka. Wow. So she just reached out to all these people. Yes, visibility matters. And, yes. And of course, the very next year, the first space shuttle was named the Enterprise. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So among, she calls them her astronauts, mm-hmm. is also Mae Jemison. Mae Jemison. Yes, the first black woman astronaut. Mm-hmm. And she directly credits Nichols as inspiration to join mm-hmm. NASA. And she was also made a guest appearance on Next Generation. Yes. Yes. And yes. same thing with one of her astronauts, Charlie Bolden, who, of mm-hmm. course, was the former uh-huh. NASA administrator. Absolutely. Wow. And so she would go on to devote her life to changing the world in this way. Now, of course, earlier this year, Michelle Nichols did pass away at the age of 89. And in memoriam, uh, her son wrote after her passing, her lights, like the ancient galaxies now being seen for the first time, will remain for us and future generations to enjoy from, learn from, and draw inspiration. Woo! Why are you making me cry? Man? God damn yeah. it! Let me tell you, like, it's impossible to talk to anyone in the space industry and not have they have, like somehow impacted by Star Trek. So yeah. Michelle Nichols' work has just been incredible. And one of the lines she said, which I absolutely love, is that our space program is our future. We haven't even begun to begin. Oh. Wow. So, Michelle wow. Nichols, right. yes. live long and prosper. I, yeah, I can't. Oh, this is the only hand I can do it with. <laughs> live long and prosper. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. Follow us in all the things. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>